Good evening, Lake Orion. Well, it's a nice, it's a cooler day. Like last week was hot and humid and sticky, especially that one day. Well, I'm your host and I am. So tell me now. Yes, indeed, Lake Orion. This is Between Tiraminas here on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina. I have Sammy here this week. Um, for those of you guys wondering where Ian is, Ian actually had a scheduling conflict. He had a scheduling conflict, so he was not able to make it today. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate, but you know, it Looking is. Looking nice in your buzz. Nah, what's a kind of a. Well, you know? not really mohawk, but kind no, of. No, it's not a mohawk. It's but, yeah. Um, Sammy, how are you doing today? I'm hanging in there. Let's talk about the, um, let's talk about, um, it's been a very sad day in the sports world. But first and foremost, we'd like to send our prayers and our condolences on behalf of Between Terminas ON TV to the victims of the Orlando nightclub shooting. Um, send our prayers out to the people, the victims involved in this senseless act of terror. Um, your heart, your heart, our pra your hearts are in our prayers this evening. Um, I want to talk about um, Gordy Howe, and Gordy Howe passed away, I believe it was Friday. Um, Gordy Howe meant a lot to not just the Detroit Red Wings, but to hockey in general. What's your le what's your viewpoint about Gordy Howe? Well, Mr. Hockey, you know. Our dad knew Gordy Howe. You know what I mean. Well, he when idolized Gordy Howe. Idolized Gordy Howe. He's met Gordy Howe. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. It's very important here that everybody knows Mr. Hockey. Of course, besides the fact that Gordy Howe um, knew, you know, played hockey. You know what I mean. But he was a very good ambassador for the game of hockey. Mm -hmm. And he he remember he played played with the Suns at the Houston Arrows. He played one game in the International Hockey League, the Detroit Vipers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at this man, this guy was a perfect ambassador for the game of hockey, you know. You know, we lost, the, the hockey world lost a great guy in Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey. And, you know, and his losses impacted a lot of people and a lot of teams have wrote and written their condolences. You know, I know it's being rolled tomorrow at Joe Louis Arena, mm -hmm. um, but the team he you impacted know. most was the Detroit Red Wings. Yes, he Can you describe? For the he used to play for the Hartford Yes, he did play too. for the Hartford Whalers, too. Mm -hmm. He went against the Wings at times, but yeah. his legacy has is with the city of Detroit, is the Detroit Red Wings. Without Gordie Howe, I don't think there'd be a Detroit Red Wings. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I, I, without the Detroit Red Wings, without Gordie Howe, of course, you gotta, you got to look at Gordie Howe's impact, what he's did with that franchise. He made a huge impact with that franchise, but when you look at, he's won a couple Stanley Cups with the, with the Detroit Red Wings when he was there. Mm -hmm. But when you look at what he's done, the ambassador of the game, he's made a huge impact with the Red Wings. You know, I'm a little disappointed that the Detroit Red Wings are not going to name the arena. Gordy Howe Arena after Gordy Howe. But There's been should, a large move. There should, there should. I've be. heard they're gonna might name the the um the next the next Ambassador Bridge because you know Gordy Howe was Canadian after Gordy Howe. That is a possibility. It's a possibility, but when you look at what Gordy Howe has meant to the city of Detroit, it's extraordinary. You know, when you look at mm -hmm. when you look at what Gordy Howe has meant to the city of Detroit. You know, he what he's meant to hockey. In general, this is a guy that really has Im made hockey what it is today. I mean, like, he had every, he, a lot of people were that great number nine after him. Of course, mm -hmm. you look at, like, players like Mike Badano were number nine. You look mm -hmm. at, you look at Gordie Howe, he was idolized by many of the current NHL stars yeah, today, true. what he's done. What his impact is not only as a player but also as a good person in the community. 
You know, Ma maybe his impact is legendary, and probably more so as a person, because you, know, you know he never stopped wearing the Detroit Red Wing red and white, even no. after he left. He retired. Well, remember, he helped hockey. a lot with his wife. Of course, his wife was battling cancer. You know, he was there for her. You know, when she needed her, her he, his wife was his agent. You know what I mean? That's an interesting story right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For another time, but Gordy Howe's impact the city of Detroit was extraordinary. Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Very important. What Gordy Howe's legacy meant to Detroit is, you know, is huge. And I really believe, and I, th and I hope the Detroit Red Wings name something in Gordy Howe's honor. They named something after him, you know. I mean, I wish if they would name the arena after him, that's fine with me. Maybe even maybe Better than Little Caesars arena. Yeah. I'm gonna add. I mean, like if they just, if they do that, I think they should name the arena that name, or maybe give them an entrance. You know what I mean? Or a dedicated entrance or somewhere. You know what I mean? Or even put a statue of the guy on there. You know what I mean? Because Gordy Howe really was the inspiration of the Detroit Red Wings. Now a lot of people say it's Steve Eiserman. No, it's not. It's Gordy Howe. Even Steve Eiserman would kind of agree with you that it was Gordy mm -hmm. Howe. Um, sticking to hockey, um, hockey season's done. The Pittsburgh Penguins are once again the Stanley Cup champions. Arguably a dark day for the NHL. This is a dark day for the NHL because here's why. This is a dark day for the NHL. Sidney Crybaby Crosby has got a Stanley Cup. Again. Again. And you Many Red at, Wings fans remember and you the look, first one. And you look at... What the crybaby's done, he's Gary Bettman's, you know. And then you got a Kenny Malkin who I think did much, but I was disappointed in San Jose's <gasps> performance. Mm -hmm. I wish it was the Dallas Stars that went there. I'm happy for Trevor Daly when he's had to go through with what he had to go through with Pittsburgh. But you know what? <sighs> I wish it was the Dallas Stars that was in there because the Stars would have definitely gave. You think many people Pittsburgh. in this town wish it would be the Red Wings that were in the Stanley Cup Finals? Detroit's dead. They're done. I mean, you okay. look at, you look at, you look at the Dallas Stars would have been a perfect match for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Had not been for divine intervention by Bill Reese, Bob Bridges, and Eric Jennings, and also Jim Manziel, I mean, then this problem, four people don't make this, this problem right. gets fixed. You know what I mean? Because but the Stars lost the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, but the Stars they should have beat St. Louis. You know, but had not been for those four, four inspirations: Bill Reese, Bob Bridges, Eric Jennings, and um, Jim Manzo. So you're blaming four people blues. for you're blaming four people for the Stars going out. Yes. What type of guy are you? I'm blaming four people. And they and they deserve, and they and they know who they are. They're you all responsible. They're all responsible for the demise of the Dallas Stars. Maybe the Dallas Stars had no one to blame but themselves. They lost in seven games. Three of those games, I might add, were in Dallas. So please explain that to me. What is there left to explain? Because I'm gonna tell you what next year. Next year, the Dallas Stars are going to win a Stanley Cup. You just Watch! I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with you on that. And I'm going to tell you what right now. I'm on TV right now here. The Dallas Stars next year are going to win a Stanley Cup. You just watch! I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That sounds just about right. That horn was bought and paid for by Bill Reese, Bob Bridge, Eric Jennings, and now Jim Manzo. I don't think so. I just don't think so. Um, but realistically, you said the Stars are going to be extremely good next year. Mm -hmm. um, what other teams do you think will be in the hunt? St. Louis, L.A. Chicago. Chicago. But we'll see what happens with the salary cap because I hear it's going down next it's year. It's going down next year, so that will impact some teams It'll like Pittsburgh. Some teams like or Pittsburgh, like Chicago, Chicago, especially. Pittsburgh's got some. Pittsburgh, you know what I mean? They're over the cap, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see where, they're at, where they stand out. And, of course, I think Dallas is in a very good shape financially because of 
what they've got, especially the young guys. I, say, I heard I the Chicago, abs and the wings are both on. I heard the abs and the wings are both under the. Cap. They're under the cap, yes. But the qu- question is, but in this league now, you got to keep your own free agents. You got to keep your own. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to make sure you develop because the name of the game has changed. Where you can't go out <clears throat> and free agents go buy it, go get a big nine, big time player and pay him at least ten million a year. Mm-hmm. There's a cap now in this. You got to develop your place in the draft. You got to build them through your feeder systems, and then and then you bring them up. You know what I mean when they're ready to go. All right. Well, that will do it for the NHL. When we come back, we're going to talk about more sports on BT. When I'm in Lake Orion and I want to catch up on sports, I watch Between Terraminas. Hello, I'm Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. And I'm former Detroit Red Wing Joe Coaster. We'd like to remind you to practice safe boating by knowing the laws regarding water safety. Please make sure you have the necessary safety equipment on board and be sure all of your equipment is working properly before leaving the dock. And the probability of being involved in a boating accident nearly doubles when alcohol is involved. Always check local weather conditions and if you notice darkening clouds, play it safe. Get off the water. Have a safe, enjoyable summer on the lake. Welcome back to Between Terminas here on ONTV. I'm Anthony Termina. Sammy, how you doing? I'm hanging in there. Um, let's talk about the NBA Finals real quick because that has to, that will probably end by next by this at the end of the week. Yeah, and it might end as early as tonight. Um, Draymond Green, Day Day, got is suspended for tonight's game because he picked up a flag or foul. He picked up a flag or foul. One. What is your take on that? You know, when I look at the situation here. This is where Golden State's death is going to get severely tested because you look at the, what Draymond Green met, means to Golden State, especially in the interior. He means a whole lot to that team, especially there because he's an inside-out player. He can go out and shoot you three. He can rebound. He can be an agitator. Golden State now has got no answer for the Queen James. None. Draymond what Green about Andre Iguodala? Iguodala, you know, the problem Andre is... Iguodala is a four. Yeah, but, you know, he's, he can play a 3-2, but here's the thing. Iguodala is not as strong as James. Right. Whereas Draymond Green has guarded LeBron James pretty good mm-hmm. in this series. The difference in this series is going to be is can Cleveland's role players show up. I mean, and the fact that this game is now at Golden State really means that, really means everything is stacked against Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Everything is. You know, do I think Cleveland? I think Cleveland will win tonight because Green's impact is going to be, Green's impact will be a um, will be missed in this game. You are aware that day day, if Golden State wins the NBA championship tonight, day day is going to be at the Oakland Athletics game, which is next door to the Oracle. Mm-hmm. And the NBA has allowed day day to go into the arena to celebrate with the team should Golden State win tonight. Yes. Um, so what you take about Day Day attending an Oakland Athletics game? Well, the Batista, when he was suspended, he actually went to a Toronto Blue Jays game. Yeah. So I had no problem with that because, you know, you're there supporting your, um, hometown teams, your true team, I mean, your, um, hometown teams, making sure that they're, they're all right, they're, they're good situated and all that. But when you look at athletes going to different venues, I don't have a problem with that because you see it. In Pittsburgh with Garrett Cole going to the Stanley Cup Finals, supporting the Pittsburgh Penguins, mm-hmm. you have Matthew Stafford going to a Detroit Red Wings game, you know, supporting mm-hmm. them. Jordan Speed going to Dallas, supporting Dallas Stars. I mean, you look at, I have no problem with it. I really don't. So, it's actually making use of good time. Making use of good time, yeah. It keeps them out of trouble. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It's better than watching it at home. Better than watching it at home, yeah. So... So going in, do you think so? You think Cleveland wins tonight? I think Cleveland wins tonight. Because I said Cleveland was going to win the series in six. I was wrong. Yeah, because well, Golden State's up three one. Yeah, because the reason why they, they won, won a game in Cleveland. Yeah, because they won in Cleveland. Now, if if Golden State can win, if Cleveland can win in Golden State, which is a very tough place to That's do. That's very tough to do. But but with no Draymond Green, I think it could happen. I think the series going to go back to Cleveland. I think three two. So you think it will be? Wow, that's 
<laughs> that whore is bought and paid for by Bill Reeds, Bob Reeds, Eric Jennings, and Jim Mantle. Jeez Louise. Um, so Golden State. So, but Golden State though is still in the driver's seat despite no day day. Yeah. I mean, you've got Steph Curry, you got Clay Thompson, you've got Andre Iguodala. That bench is very deep for Golden State. Right. Do you yes. regard? Do you regard? Are we? living in a dynasty of Golden State. Are we witnessing that? Well, we look Golden State's doing well because they play this odd steak teen ball. You know what I mean? Where you look at what they've been doing. Step by they're mostly catch and shoot type of team. They're catch and shoot type of team. They're a three-point shooting team. You know, where the NBA is starting to go with more of a three-point shooting three type point of Three-point finesse type right. of game. It's not, it's not the physical type of Smash mouth, physicality, big man. If they man, played the 95, 96 Bulls, they don't beat them. You don't think so? They, the 95, 96 Bulls don't. Shaq said that Shaq said the 2000, 2001 Lakers would beat the current Golden State. I agree with them because they wouldn't have an answer for Shaquille O'Neal. Or Kobe Bryant. Or Kobe Bryant because Stephen Curry is not a good defender. Clay Thompson is not a good defender. And you look at Golden State's doing over 100 points per in the last in the last three contests, so you know that's why they don't match up well with the Lakers. They don't match up well with the Bulls. You know what I mean? Of those eras, those eras, they don't match up well. The reason why Golden what State. What about the Pistons of '04? Heck, no, they don't match up well with them. Okay, because I have to believe this, but Golden State would have no answer for Ben Wallace. You think Golden State would have no answer for Ben Wallace? You just throw it inside to him. He gets it in there any time. What about Rasheed Wallace? Rasheed Wallace going to probably guard Draymond Green. So that's a tough matchup anyway. Right. So, but you think, are we living in a dynasty of Golden State? Mm, yes and no. I mean, if you win three championships, then you're in a dynasty. If you Fair win, to say. If you win... If you win one or two, then you've won a, a championship. Back to back. Well, the scary thing about Golden State is they're all young. I know. They're all very young. They're all and they're all underpaid. Mm-hmm. That's the scary thing about Golden State. I know. And that's scary. I mean, when you look at a guy like Stephen Curry, of course, really has played at a small college like Davidson. Yes. You look at Clay Thompson, of course, you know, played at a big school. Washington State, and you look at Draymond Green, Michigan State. Mm -hmm. I mean, Golden State's management's done a very good job at drafting these players and developing these players. These players really haven't came from other organizations. They, the Golden State's done a magnificent job developing them. I wonder what Steve Kerr's practice um, camps are like for Golden State because I might want to investigate Golden State's practice habits. You Why? know what I mean? Because, I mean, who knows? They could be, I've been hearing rumblings, they could be in there maybe practicing about four hours a day shooting. Hmm. So I've been hearing a lot of rumblings. Is that about against that. NBA Bro? I don't know if it is. Well, well you'll have to check that I'll out. I'll check it out. Hmm. All right, so any final thoughts about the NBA Finals? I think Cleveland wins tonight because I think that no Draymond Green will be an impact. It's going to go back to the Q 3 2. I think it's going to go seven games. All right. Well, we'll be right back with Between Terminas here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Hello, Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina talking away now. In it, we'll talk various stories from reigning from the state to Oakland County teams affecting the OAA. Catch us here on OAA now. Hello Lake Orion, it's Anthony Terramina, co-host of Between Terraminas. I want to let you know of a new show called History Now. In it, we're going to talk about global, national, and political events that occur in our lifetime. We're going to also have guests and also have co-hosts as well, and also plenty of surprises. Catch us on History Now here on ONTV. Welcome back to Between Terminas here on ONTV. Sam, how you doing? Hanging in there. 
Wonderful. Let's talk about the third subject, the Tigers, the Detroit Tigers. Ian Weatherspoon would be extremely happy at where the Tigers are at right now. Explain. Because Michael Fulmer's done very well for this team. I mean, but like I, they're tied with the Kansas City Royals. For but, second in the AL but we Central. All know, but we all know Kansas City's going to catch them, so don't worry. So I'm not worried. And then you got the Cleveland Indians. Of course, they're the, leading the league. They're leading the Central. Of course, they got Kansas City tonight, which I <clears> think is a big series. The Tigers play the White Sox, which is going to be a lovely series. Because the Sox do not get to see Justin Verlander, nor, nor um, I don't think they get. No, they do get to see Verlander in the series. Um, Zimmerman. Yeah, no, the UC Zimmerman. Yes, the UC Zimmerman. So it's gonna, it's a big series for the Tigers too, in the South Side. Yes, it's a big series for the Tigers. And the, remember what I've talked about for years after years after years, in front of the bozo Ian Weatherspoon. I tell Ian all the time that the tiger, all the Tigers have to do is keep winning series. They keep winning series. You and Ian don't believe me. I still don't because here's why. The Tigers ain't going to win this series against Chicago because Chicago's a better team at home. Chris Sale's a better pitcher at home. And you look at what the – and you look at yeah, – Are most pitchers struggled. better at home? You look, yeah, Chicago struggled, sure. But the Tigers are due to go on another slump. Justin Upton started to get, starting to go on another slump. Get ready to go on our slump. The reason why the Tigers are winning right now is because of Victor Martinez. That is the reason why. When he gets into a slump, they're going back down the hill. And I think, and you look at it, end of the day, the Kansas City Royals will catch him. And, of course, the Detroit Tigers, by the end of the weekend, will be back down third place, looking up at the Cleveland Indians and, and Ian Weatherspoon, Kansas City Royals. You really think that you really think that the Tigers are going to still be third or fourth? That's going to be worse because the Chicago White Sox are only four and a half back. And why are the Tigers two and a half? Three. Back. That's three back. So it looks like it's a very competitive division. Yes, it is. Um, are, are you happy with Fulmer? How, how he's produced for the Tigers? Well, my fancy team. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm very happy. I mean, I don't like the fact that he's got a pitch count or an innings count. You know what I mean? hate that you know what I mean mm -hmm. I mean it's like the Strasburg rule I mean that's not right so do you think the Tigers could have the option of shutting him down during they better not the you don't think they'll go down the Washington Nationals right? I hope they don't you know but I'm mean, here and they might you know and if they do fire Osmus so but I mean you've been calling for his head for a while of course I've been calling for his head for a while I think brothers have been calling for their head mm-hmm um, but the Tigers went into Yankee Stadium, which is a very hard place to play at, and they won two out of three against the New York Yankees. All they did was take. All they did was just get to the Yankees starting lineup, and then that's how they do it. I know the Yankees are struggling a little bit, but the AL East is a much tougher division than Central. I don't know about that. But end of the day. Got to give their got to give credit where credits due. How can you say that the AL East is tougher than Boston the Boston solid, Toronto solid. But my point Baltimore is you've got four solid. teams in the Central that are extremely solid. You've got the Indians, you've got the Tigers, you've got the Royals, you've got the White Sox. They're all very solid teams, and you're telling me that the AL East is tougher than the Central? Well, you got Boston who's solid. Boston's good. you got Baltimore. you got Toronto. I mean, don't those teams can hit in Tampa Bay? With their young staff, I mean, like, you look at the AL East, it's not a bad division there. It's not a bad division, but I don't still think they're AL West will be all Texas, you know what I mean? Right now it's being all Texas. Yes. All Texas. So you think it'll be, so you think it'll ultimately be Texas comes out of the West? Yes. Even over the Angels? Yes. All right. You have any final thoughts on the Tigers? They're done for. You want to talk about Dragons real quick? Yeah. Softball. Softball preview. Playing Mercy. Farmington Hills Mercy. No you know, I'm sick and tired of all the um, hype that Front Hills Mercy is getting. Of course, yeah, State Chance is hyping the Marlins up. You know, Abby Krasetsky, very good player for them. Like, going to be Miss, Miss, um, Miss Softball for the State of Michigan. He's got a record 20 home runs this year, 91 RBIs, 565 batting average. But That's impressive. You know, when you look at this matchup, Mercy's got a very good pitcher, Andrea Elmore. Of course, she's 28-1 um, this year as a starter. 
an under one ERA. But when you look at this matchup, you know, Lake Orion, I think, is a team that really, I think nobody's giving them respect. You know what I mean? I think the media, you know, the, the stop media in the state have lack given Lake Orion the lack of respect they deserve. Of course, is that um, a good thing? It is a good thing in some sports, but I don't like the field they're going to is Wayne State. I think that yeah. I look at their field and that I don't like how it's developed. I really don't like I really don't like the venue over there at Wayne State. Um not being mean. Well Wayne State's hosting two um, yeah, they're hosting quarterfinals. Two of them and they're they, and they were in and from Smith Mercy is the first game at two o'clock. Yep. So it's gonna be a interesting who adjusts to that to that dynamic. The only this the only advantage I would get the Marlins is the fact is, um, there's two of them. If Orion's offense shows up in this game, I think they, I think they pull off the upset. But the key is, Mercy's got a lot of experience. That's true. Because they went to state quarterfinal last year before they got beat by Caledonia. Orion's really not been here before, mm -hmm. and I think that experience. If Orion can get rid of the pregame jitters early on, I think this Dragon team can hang with the Marlins and probably beat the Marlins. I really do. And go to Michigan State. Yeah, go to Michigan State. I think I think Lake Orion's got a good chance to go to Michigan State. But remember, Fire Sales Mercy, of course, they they played a tough schedule themselves, but they really have not been tested in districts and regionals, whereas Lake Orion's played Clarkston, Oxford in the district round, and and then of course in the regional round having to go through Romeo. If Orion's offense shows up in this game against Farm Tills Mercy, if they get to Edmore early, I think Lake Orion wins this game. So you're projecting, are you project? Are you going with the upset or are you going with... I'm going to go with the upset because the Dragons have not had a lot of respect given to them. Mm -hmm. They have not been given virtually anything from... And Farm Tales Mercy's gotten everything like on a silver planter. Of course, you know, Abby Krasinski, she's from Brighton. Yeah. Of course, you know, she's not even from Farmington Hill. She's from Brighton. I mean... The private school, public school debate. Right, and that opens that debate up. But... I think if the Dragons could somehow limit Krzyzewski, make sure, I wouldn't even, I would just put her on, you know what I mean, be honest with you, and then you get to add more early, I think this Dragon team can pull off the upset. I don't well, know how um, Coach Tour by Terra is going to do this, mm -hmm. but he's got to come up with a good game plan, and and I know they had issues with Plymouth. They played right. Plymouth a couple weeks ago, Farnsworth Mercy right. they did not look good in that game. Right. They lost one nothing. so there is a way Mercy can be had. So what? win or lose, you're still going to be proud of the Dragon oh, softball yeah. team. I mean, like, first, this first regional since regional since 04. 04. I mean, but first regional since 04. You know what I mean? But a lot of people want them to go far, and I think this is a team that's very much under the radar this year. All right. Well, any final thoughts? Let's see what happens. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next week we will we'll have Ian back, hopefully, and. Um, you know, we'll talk about more sports here on Between Terminas on ON TV. Have a great night, Lake Orion, and see you soon.